Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's been a while since I've posted and I'm really excited to get this video out. This video today is going to be on the ESP01 relay module. There's a little hack that I found that is going to make this a lot better. Special thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. Thank you PCBWay, I really appreciate, appreciate your sponsorship and this really helps the channel. Right, so let's get back into this. I use the ESP01 relay module for Home Assistant. I did play around with Home Assistant in the past, but I did not get all that excited about Home Assistant and never got quite into it. I tried to connect it up to Sonoffs and that was always an issue and rather difficult and, and cumbersome. And it didn't always work. I then came across this ESP01 relay module here, which to me was a game changer. This thing is an amazing little module and it allows me through the ESP01, which is also an incredible microcontroller, to control certain things. Now, I've, I've used this in many different projects, such as on my gate, on my main gate, I can now remotely open my main gate. And the problem is I would have to put another ESP module in there to monitor the condition of the gate. But I found a little hack on this board, and it's a pity that it was not implemented at startup. If you wire the GPIO2 directly with wires, soldering it directly onto the board and then bringing it into a sensor or a reed switch or a, or a, um, a micro switch or anything like that, you can actually then double the capabilities of this ESP01 relay module. So this is a real missed opportunity on the board and I hope that one day they add the GPI2 uh, input or output that you can then set in your code. But what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you everything. I'm going to show you the hardware hack to solder on the, the wires. I'm going to show you the code on Home Assistant to, um, to enable this hack and for us to see it in action. So where I've used it, for example, is my main gate. It will open the main gate uh, from ESP Home. But then I will get a notification on my phone saying that the gate was opened. Then when the gate was closed, the read switch through GPIO2 gets activated again and it tells me that the gate is closed. Another nice feature is through the automation on Home Assistant, I can say, well, after two minutes, if the gate is not closed, send me another notification, which is incredibly useful because sometimes when we leave home, when we drive away, we turn around, we press the remote and we think that the gate is closing. And in South Africa, that is a big deal. If you leave your gate open, you will be burgled. So um, you know, it will re message me in two minutes time saying that your gate is still open and I can pull over, go into my home assistant on the app, close the gate and then go and check my cameras via remote monitoring. I can go into my cameras, have a look and see that my gate is actually closed. I'll then get a notification on my phone saying that the gate is now closed and I will be happy and on my way. Another way that I've used this, as I said, I can remote view my cameras. So I uh, log into my cameras and somebody comes to drop off a package. I can tell them, I'm going to open the gate. Okay, you come in, put the package into a box. And when you leave, I'll close the gate again. I am monitoring you via a camera. I've done this in part where I'm getting a delivery from take a lot. And the guy, the driver comes along here. I tell him he's on camera, open the gate. He walks in, puts the package in and walks out. Uh, if he goes down the stairs, the alarm will go off and the security company will be notified. So yeah, it is pretty good and it is pretty useful. Another way I've used this is in my bathroom on the light. I've actually modified the light switch. You can see a photograph here of the light switch, which is just a push button. The push button goes into GPIO2. It gets picked up by Home Assistant. And then because I have programmed it to do so, it will then turn the light on or turn the light off. So it'll toggle the, the light, which is then using the relay to do the toggling and the, the GPIO2 for me to have a push button where I can push button it or I can run it directly from uh, Home Assistant, which is incredibly useful. So there are so many uses of this here. Another use that I've used it for is on my pool pump. So I've automated my pool using one of these relays that goes into a contactor. The contactor allows for the high current switching of the, of the motor so it doesn't damage the small relay and it will automatically turn my pool on and off. But I've wired a push button into that as well so that when 
um, I push the button, it toggles whether the pool pump is running or not. So if I want to go clean it, I don't have to come up here and turn off the pump. I can just press the button um, underneath my control unit and that will turn the button off. I mean, turn the, turn the pool, pool pump off. So very useful and there are so many different opportunities for that. So what I want to do now is if you look at this diagram, it will show you that from the top left, you've got a ground, then you've got GPIO2 and GPIO1. So if we look at the, uh, the module over here, the first module at the top left-hand corner is your ground, then GPIO2, GPIO1, right? If you flip this over, that will be ground, GPIO2, GPIO1. What we want to do is we want to solder a wire onto ground, and then GPIO2. Now that can go into a push button, which is something that I will demonstrate shortly. It will go into the push button or it can go into a read switch or it can go into multiple different sensors, uh, relay points, anything that you want to monitor and action and then use that action to drive the relay is perfect for this board. We've got this on our helping hands now and let's now, now the first thing I like to do when I'm freshly soldering something is tin it first. So I'm just going to tin this. Excuse my shaking hands. So I tin the point. Let's get a good solder on there and nice amount of solder onto the second one and make sure it's tin nicely. There we go. Now I have previously prepared a wire which I have tinned and cut down to size and we are just going to simply attach this wire onto here. If I can stop shaking for a minute, I think it's too much coffee. Okay, now I've got those two wires soldered on nice and firmly, doesn't touch anything and not touching any of the other uh, contacts. And we can now securely use this and make our button. Right, now let's have a look at how we're going to program the ESPR1. There is There are lots of videos on programming the ESPR1, but my favorite method is to use these UART programming boards. And I've modified one where I 3D printed a part around it. So you can see it here. I 3D printed a part around it and I've added a push button. Push button will then will drive the programming button down to ground and then allows it to be programmed. So I just hold that in, pop it into my USB port, let go of the button, and then it will be in programming mode. So let's pop this into our machine. I'll pop it into the side of my laptop. I am going to go on to ESP Home Builder. I'm not going to do a demonstration on how to install that on this video. That's out of the scope of this video. There are plenty of videos around there around ESP Home. Now, I want to create a new device. So the first thing I need to do with this device is we need to get it programmed. We need to get it ready for ESP Home. And I'm just going to pop it in, press my button to set it into programming mode. And I'm going to add a new device. We open up ESP Home Web. And in here, I will say connect. It will prompt me where the, where the item is connected to on which serial port, and I can connect it there. We then run prepare for first use, and we allow that to install the, first, the, the base software that ESP Home requires for, uh, to work on Home Assistant. So it's a very useful little module there where it will go in and it will dry, clear the, the, uh, the ESPR1 module and write on there what it needs to write. It will install the software that it needs to do so that it can pre-configure it. This is one of the useful things about ESP Home where uh, you don't have to then worry about setting it up and doing fancy stuff. It will do it all for you. So it will initialize it and install the base program. Okay, now that we got the ESP Home ready on there, let's go create a new device and click on continue. We'll call this YouTube a demo. And it is going to be an ESP8266 module. Let's install. Right, I'm going to cancel that because we still want to write the code. So let's go and write the code. So we come into here. Okay, let's have a look at the code. So I like to hard code my IP address into here so that it's literally a static IP address that I'm always using. 
and then I am going to go down to after captive portal which is part of your automatic okay I like to set the web server and uh, I make it port 80 that way I can actually log into the module directly directly via its IP address which helps me for testing and to work on it then I'm going to have a switch here now in, under the name of the switch we're just going to call it uh, YouTube demo right and on my sensor I'm going to say push button you can call it whatever you want to, but I'm just going to for now call it a push button. Right. Now, that, as you can see, is wired into GPO IO2. Once we've done that, we can save it. And because I haven't configured the IP address on the unit yet, I'll have to do it via the ESP programmer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to manually download it. I'll wait for it to compile. This can take a little while, especially if you haven't done it in a while. It gets new libraries and all that. So we will wait for this to quickly compile. While we're waiting for that to finish compiling, uh, maybe a little quick word from my sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by PCBWay. If you're into electronics and PCB projects, PCBWay is the place to go. They offer high quality PCB prototyping and assembly services. But that's not all. PCBWay also provides precise CNC machining services. And for those innovative 3D printing projects, their 3D printing services have got you covered too. Fast turnaround time, excellent customer support, and all at an affordable price. Check them out at PCBWay.com and take your projects to the next level. Yeah, thank you very much to PCB Way for sponsoring this video. Without you, this would become a lot more difficult. Uh, in the past, I've had to do it without sponsorship, and it's been very difficult to do videos. So thank you, PCB Way, for sponsoring this video and for supporting me. The affiliate link is in the description below. If you want to click on that affiliate link and get an extra $5 off for your first product. And yeah, they are an amazing service. I will be using them uh, in a nice little project that I'm working on at the moment very shortly and we'll do a video once I get that data out and that uh, those PC boards back from PCBWay and we get that all done. So I'm excited about that project. It's an exciting little thing that I'm going to add to Home Assistant. Stay tuned. Right, now that that is compiled, obviously it's not as quick as shown in this video. It, to it took 212 seconds. So I'm going to save this Let's save this onto my hard drive. I'm now going to save it. I'm going to open the folder location and we are now going to install that. So to install that, we click on close. We close the code. We go back to ESP Home Programmer and we connect once again to our device. I'm going to connect over there. And now we hit install. I'm going to go and choose the file. And let's install that. That will take a little minute or so for it to install that onto the ESP01. So it's busy installing. It might take a minute. It's faster if you keep it on this on the screen. I'm going to speed this up a little bit. Now that we've got the configuration complete and it's ready to go, let's go back to our module here. I'm going to, I'm going to put a multimeter on here, which will be my load. And then we can demonstrate that it's opening. Right, let's wire that in there to there. Very quick and simple. Screw the two points in there. And now I'm going to wire my 5 volt power supply into this. Okay, now that I've wired up the power supply and the multimeter, let's pop this out of here. And we'll pop this into our ESP01 relay module. And we'll hit the power. All right, we are powered up. Now I'm going to take my wires here. I'm going to push them into my push button here for the push button. All right, let's go back into here. So now that you can see, I have my module and I can see the module. So if we turn on the relay, you can hear the multimeter goes off and it's showing that the relay has been pulled in. And if I push a button on here, it shows that the push button has been turned on. So I, as I turn off, turn it on. Right, now let's go and add a quick automation. Before we can use this device, we need to add it to ESP Home. So if I go to check out new devices, you'll see that the ESP Home here is here. 
I can add that and submit it. Well now, so I've added YouTube demo successfully to the configuration and now it's part of my system. So now we can go to settings, we can go to automations. Let's create a new automation. I'm going to add a trigger. So let's go to devices, go search for YouTube. There's YouTube demo, right? And uh, my trigger is when the YouTube push button is closed. I can then go and say what I want to do and I'll add an action. Let's go back to YouTube and toggle YouTube, YouTube demo. That's my relay. We can save that, call it YouTube. Trying to do this with one hand. Save it and now that is done. So in theory, if we go back to visit that page and I press the button, it will then toggle the relay. I press the button again and it will turn the relay off. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope this is helpful and I hope this can help you extend your ESP uh, relay module and also improve your home assistant. I found this incredibly useful for me. I use it on light switches, as I've said earlier, and it is an amazing project, great fun. Thank you so much for joining me. Please like and subscribe this video and I will be back soon with more videos. God bless, stay well, stay safe, thank you.